You could tell them that I've been from hell and back When the heat is on, I fire back Yo, what is going on guys? Fishy Jersey here, back with another video for you all. And today, we're gonna be talking about whether or not anemones are worth it. Is it worth having an anemone? Should you get one or should you not? Hopefully, with my tips, it will clear some of you guys' questions up and you guys can make a decision for yourselves on should I get one or should I not? So let's jump right into the video. Now, I've owned anemones for quite some time. Um, I've owned them since I first got into the hobby about four and a half, almost five years ago. And I got my first one about six to eight months after I got my first saltwater tank. Um, so I like to think that I have a decent amount of experience to kind of help you guys out. So first tip I like to give you guys is probably the most important to me at least. And um, that is having a pretty good light fixture or having a really good light fixture I should say because if you guys didn't know anemones thrive and love light that's pretty much their main food source um, and it's it's how they grow obviously so having a light fixture is essential to its growth it's a hundred percent essential super important to its growth and you will see results like I did with mine uh, when I first got my anemone it was about this big and now I have two of them because it uh, split um, anemones do split if you guys didn't uh, know that but mine split and I have two now which are probably both about this big and uh, I'll show you guys some video uh, of that throughout this video so you guys can see um, also along with my clowns and the anemone now Having a light fixture, like I said, is key to having a successful uh, anemone that can thrive in your tank. That's pretty much, that's probably the, the most simple tip is getting a good light fixture. Um, saving it for a, for a light is 100% worth it to me because one, it's good for your anemone and also your corals will absolutely love it. So it's a win-win situation. It's not you're just buying it for the anemone, you're buying it for your entire tank. Um, and also, I prefer LEDs because they do save energy. And uh, I like small little compact light fixtures that actually do a lot of work, like the Kessels. I have the Kessel A350, super, super great light. I highly recommend to anybody with a freshwater or saltwater tank, they make lights for both. And um, that's that tip. The most simple is get a good light. Now the next tip kind of has to do with the light because of the anemone's movement. That's the next tip um, and something I'm going to kind of tell you guys is you have to understand that anemones move by themselves when they want whether you like it or not. Once you put the anemone in the tank it will move to where it wants to sit, it, it will it will it will um, plant its foot somewhere in your tank on a rock and, and stay um, until it likes until until it wants to move again. Um, I got lucky with mine. Mine moved to the very top of the tank, center, high up in the tank, where the light is the strongest. Since the anemones want light and they like light, they move to where they want. Uh, or where they feel like the light is best for them. Like mine, excuse me, like mine moved in the top center where the light is the strongest. I got lucky with that because I could place corals around and uh, kind of fill out the rock under that, which I will get into next tip. But back to the movement, I've seen so many YouTubers here in the YouTube community, in the fish community, that have transitioned from fresh to salt and they get an a anemone and they're confused or they get frustrated because the anemone is not where they want it to be and they, they physically move it with their hand and, and place it somewhere uh, where they want the anemone to sit and then it just moves back to where it was and they get frustrated but I'm like do you not 
did you not like read up on anemones or, or did, you, did you not know that anemones move by themselves? It's just something you have to understand and know when uh, thinking about buying an anemone, which leads me to my next tip. And that is don't buy an anemone as one of your last pieces for your tank because like I said, when, it, when an anemone is placed into the tank, it will move around the tank for a couple of days and then finally find its spot where it wants to sit. And if you have a bunch of corals already established all over your tank and you put an anemone in there, it's going to move around the, the tank and potentially hurt or kill your coral. Um, and that is just a big waste of money. Um, if you have a bunch of coral and then you add an anemone and then it kills all the, all the, all the coral. What I did, um, just so you guys know, what I did was I had my tank, it was mostly fish only first, and then I started slowly adding corals, but before I added a ton of coral, I added an anemone and let the anemone establish itself on the rock work and then I filled out the rocks with coral. Um, so what I'm pretty much saying is have your anemone be one of your kind of first purchases once your tank is capable and mature enough and mature enough to handle an anemone. And also you have to be on top of kind of your water parameters and um, all that good stuff, you know, as anyone would be whether or not you have, you have an anemone or not. Um, and so my last and final tip is pretty simple. If you want your clowns to host an anemone, do your research, do your homework, and find out what anemone does that clownfish prefer. So for example, if you want a maroon clownfish or a pair of maroons, you have to think about, well, I want to get, I want to have the best chances of those clowns hosting that anemone, so what anemone do they prefer? Oh, they prefer this anemone, okay? So now you know, uh, I want these clowns and they prefer this anemone, so I should probably buy that anemone, and that will raise the chances of the clowns hosting the anemone. And if you don't know how to get your clowns to host an anemone, I have a super, super great method on my channel. I put the video right here somewhere on the screen, and you guys can click on that, and it will give you probably one of the best methods on how to get your clownfish to host an anemone. I've done it plenty of times with multiple clownfish, tank raised and wild clownfish. By the way guys, tank raised clowns will host anemones. I've done it multiple times, so uh, it works. Um, so pretty much guys, those are my tips on, on pretty much anemones and hopefully you guys can make a decision for yourself on whether or not you should get one. Let me know down in the comment section. If I missed anything, I'm pretty sure I didn't, but um, if I did, please let me know. If you guys have any questions, comments, or suggestions, leave it down in the comment section. I'll get back to you as soon as possible. If you guys like this video, please hit that thumbs up button. It helps a ton. And if you're new to my channel, you're just watching this video, subscribe for more, and I will see you guys later. Peace out. Which is, you want a bigger tank, but you can't get one. And that is this exact situation that I'm in right now. I cannot buy a, a, a bigger tank, one, because it's way too expensive. It would take me